All right, I'm live. Peace, peace, family. This chance coming back at you again with Young, Black, and Intelligent. Today, we're going to be going in on something uh, that's a very important topic, and it may stir some people up or offend some people, but it's a it's a conversation that, that needs to be had, and it's a topic that needs to be discussed on the heels of Martin Luther King Day. Uh, today, we're going to go into integration and uh, some of the reasons or why I feel that integration is one of the worst things to have happened to black people and Africans across uh, across America and the diaspora. Uh, excuse me. Just uh, some precursors. Uh, if you do watch this video, please try to watch the video in its entirety. Uh, like, share and subscribe. Comment if you like the content. And uh, please uh, follow on Facebook at YBI, uh, YBI and or uh, YBI Academy. <clears throat> uh, also, a disclaimer, this is no no hate speech, no, no, uh, not to stir up racial tension. This is for critical analysis and uh, for critical thinkers. You know what I'm saying? This is not to, like I said, promote hate speech or division between whites and blacks or to create tension. This is just an analysis and a critical look at <clears throat> how integration has affected us and just the history of integration for blacks, not only in America, but in Africa as well. So I'll be looking down at some of my notes and points here and there, uh, but let's get into it, family. So to start, to start off initially, before any contact with uh, a white person, a European, Anglo-Saxon, so on and so forth, many of us, if not all of us are aware that we have many high civilizations. Uh, we had many scholars, we have many schools in uh, Wasset, uh, it's another, uh, Timbuktu, uh, the libraries, we, we had a lot of, we were able to understand and understand alchemy and how to refine metals, how to grow. We, we had science of mathematics, the science of anatomy, the body, chemistry, like I mentioned, elements, uh, astronomical uh, sciences and, and tracking and following the stars for time and calendar and circadian pattern calculations. So we had a very high and sustainable society. If we were to break down some of the golden eras of Kemet and some of the golden eras of certain dynasties, we know for a fact that we've had some of the longest working civilizations known to earth or known to the planet. And that's to say that, you know, all things do, all great things do come to an end. What comes up does come down. So it's not to say that everything was perfect, but we know that we've had sustainable uh, civilizations for decades, for, for, for centuries, more than decades, for centuries before any contact with the European. So I'm saying that to say before we ever made contact with anyone else, we were doing great things. We were doing marvelous things, whether it's agriculture, whether it's botany, whether it's Akhenaten, whether it's Tahotep, whether it's Imhotep, whether it's Queen T, we 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 uh Queen Hatchusep, we 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 did so much before any contact. Or, or any encounters with a white person. Or, and on those times, that would be a Greco-Roman because the first individuals of white or European descent that many of our ancestors in Kemet would come in contact with would be Greco-Romans. But I just want to lay out <clears throat> that preface uh, to, so that we can understand, well, so we can understand and understand that before contact with Europeans, we were, we, we were on to great things, doing great things. If you really go and do your research and do the knowledge and you go and study the research, let me get some of this Moroccan butter because I know my lips are going to be dry, dry. When you go and study this, you will see many of the Greeks and Romans and Homer and Ptolemy and Plato and all of these individuals who are of Greco-Roman or European or Anglo-Saxon or white or whatever you want to consider them. All these people study philosophy, they study the anatomy, they study mathematics and the sciences under Kemet, at the feet of Kemet. You know, they, they went into Kemet, tried to get certain information, couldn't understand it, couldn't overstand it. 
Some could argue decalcified pineal gland and lack of selenium based on the environment they were in. Some could. It's so many arguments that, that you can make to why they weren't able to fully grasp the, the information that they were seeking through the mystery schools. But then another thing a lot of people don't understand to fully understand and understand the information from the mystery schools in the so-called hidden knowledge or the unseen knowledge, it would take up to 40 years, 42 or 44 years to even understand, to even understand and understand that knowledge and those principles and concepts. So when we go back to our ancestors, we were very studious people. We were very meticulous people. We were very crafty people before we ever encountered or, 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 or spoke to a European. So we had high civilization, high, a high society with morals, standards, religious systems, culture, customs, food, agriculture, botany, as I already alluded to, we, we had all of this before we ever encountered a European. So that's just for pre preliminary purposes. Okay. Now let's get into this integration and a lot of the reasons why we suffer from integration and, and how Europeans benefited from integration. Um, one of the first points through slavery and then through integration or the civil rights movement through slavery, the Europeans benefited the most. First off, through slavery and free labor. So, of course, we all we all know the Middle Passage, the the the, the, uh, the West Atlantic slave trade, slaves being brought to the to the South Americas, brought up into the North Americas, chattel slavery, so on and so forth. So, through this process, now we bumping up to where we are we are enslaved and pretty much integrated with Europeans or integrated with British, French, Roman, so on and so forth. So just to sum that up, we'll just say Europeans because many of these individuals who were running off into Africa, running off into South America, getting involved in the slave trade were of European descent or from a country in Europe, on the continent of Europe. So through the, through the free slave labor, many, many have done research and tried to equate exactly what that amount is and how much they really acquire from their free slave labor free slave labor some people have said it's up it's upwards of five uh 50 billion dollars if you if you equate it to the revenue and the return on lack of investment well i mean it was a a, a principal investment but based off the return on the investment of a slave which you know you can get a slave fifty dollars sixty dollars five hundred four hundred three hundred many prices for slaves, as we know throughout the decades and the centuries of slavery, but we know that it was basically free labor from there on out. So through that free labor and through being integrated with a white person or with a European, they benefited from that free labor. We benefited no way, shape, or form. That All that was to our detriment. So here we go. Soon as soon as you integrated, as soon as you started being intermingling with these people, you were slave. It's, 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 it's chattel slavery, okay? And then from there, you working for them, working for them, working for them. Not only are you working for them, you're being traumatized psychologically, mentally. Okay. You're being tortured. You're being raped. Okay. You're being subjugated. You're being, you're being, uh, you're being buck broken for another, for another term to use. Okay. So these are the things that are occurring when this is happening. Okay. These are the things that are going on when we're integrated or dealing with these people. And then we move forward and we get alleged freedom and alleged civil rights movements. And it's a melting pot and we're all going to get along. OK. Through integration, they still benefit. How do they still benefit through integration? Because you're still getting a low wage. You still even to this day, we're not getting paid. We're overworked and underpaid. Even to this day, it's jobs and positions that black individuals are. Basically shunned from or, or or excluded from or not given the opportunity to receive them. And a lot of it is due to white wealth, as we'll go more white slave wealth, white white slave capitalist chokehold on wealth in economy and industries as we move forward and talk about sports and entertainment. Most, most of all of these media sources, most of all of these sports teams are owned by what? White individuals, specifically a white man. Where, where would you acquire? How do you get the time to acquire such money to own a billion dollar franchise? How much time do you think? How much free labor do you think? How much exploitation do you think it really takes to acquire such money? And once you acquire that money and once you've acquired that stronghold, that's how white, white racism, white supremacy is created. Because then you can control economy. You can control 
industry through slave, through free slave, through the accumulation of monies from free slave labor. It's millions, if not more, of white families who will never ever have to deal with going without money simply due to money that they that their family acquired through, through free slave labor or through opportunities through free slave labor. Okay, that they that they've acquired through opportunities through a white supremacist structure developed through free slave labor where whites have an advantage on the workforce. Whites have an advantage getting a job. Whites have an advantage being around somebody who you can almost do an interview in person casually because they get to know who you are intricately as, a, as an individual on a more intricate level than a job interview. And you already had an advantage for a job in that type of manner because you're just touching shoulders with individuals who have access. All right. So we pretty much we pretty much got in got into that. I think we covered that well. <clears throat> we'll move forward. Now, many of you may or may not know about Black Wall Street. The the production and then the destruction of Black Wall Street furthermore goes into an issue with integration. You integrate it with a group of individuals who hate you. You integrate it with a group of individuals who have no love for you. You integrate it with a group of individuals who do not have your best interest at heart. Am I, now, here's the disclaimer. Am I saying every white person hates a black person? No. Am I saying every white person has it out negatively for a black person? No. I'm talking about on a macro level, collectively as a system, collectively as a group, collectively as a, a, a movement or a, a group of individuals. White people do not have our best interests at heart. It wouldn't make sense when you talk about survival. If life is about survival, why would an entirely other group, an entirely different race that is that, that we have a very, very, very shaky, to say the least, history with, why would they... Up until up until today, what would make them now want to have our best interests at heart? That that makes no sense at all. It, 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 it makes no sense. So when we see in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street get productive, get 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 yeah get produced, get developed, which wasn't a direct counter, which would have been a direct counter because correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think the actual New York City European based Wall Street had even been developed yet. I think they got the blueprint for that through Black Wall Street. But somebody in the comments or uh, somebody may come in and correct me where, if I'm wrong on that. But I'm saying that to say that's a direct counter against Wall Street, against having an economic base. And will you really understand how Wall Street stocks and bonds, how the economy fluctuates based off Wall Street? And you understand white supremacy and white privilege. You, you can understand and understand how many advantages they have even in that realm. Like I said. Many of these individuals have an advantage because they're around people who do it. Many of us aren't. How many of us don't know nobody who who's in the Wall Street, who's in the stocks and bonds, who's in the big business, who's in who's into trading off different assets and knowing uh, the fluctuation of, of different companies and S and P five hundreds and stock indexes. We don't always rub shoulders in our community with people who do that with the uh, with internet with technology. We are able to now have more access and ability to go and explore these things and to see individuals of such to get more access. But we we all know many of us don't have the opportunity to have these types of things, to have access to individuals who are doing these types of things. So there's another advantage <clears throat> of integration from white people because they get a blueprint for black wall street they get a blueprint a blueprint for the importance of how to create and set up an economic base okay then you also go and destroy it and kill off people and try and then furthermore traumatize our people furthermore destroy our people furthermore dissuade our people from having those ideas in which will furthermore benefit us moving into a, an American economy, <clears throat> moving into a, a capitalist American economy, because the individuals who set up Black Wall Street was ahead of their time. They may have already known that America was going to move into a capitalist society, a capitalist nation. 
Okay, and therefore you have to have your economics set up. You have to have your economic base strong. You have to understand and understand the importance of only spending money and exchanging currency with individuals who look like yourself. You have to understand and understand the concept of going out of your way to spend money with the individual who looks like yourself. To have communities set up and to have something like a blog, a Black Wall Street set up to where you can go and do all of your of your daily deal. You may need to talk to a lawyer you may need to shop you may need to may need to um get into some gardening you may need to get into some fragrances and some other things that people may be selling everything you need would be at this base so not only could you start to get into invest investing in stocks and bonds as that would have uh, uh, of course expanded into that but you will also get the opportunity to spend money with individuals who look like you network socialize and for a lot of our youth start to visualize and see individuals who look like them doing what is necessary to survive more so than working for somebody to get a check to then continue to work for somebody to get a check and potentially never getting ahead. It's not to say that we don't have individuals who get ahead via college degrees, trades, or just finding a great job. Um, but on a large scale, like everything we look at is large scale. So, cause many people's counters is, well, there are black people with great jobs that work a nine to five and get ahead. Yes. But on average, how many there, there are white people who love black people in the gym, but on average, how many see we're not looking at a micro micro level. We can't look at one individual occurrence or three to five individual occurrences. We have to look at it at a macro level at a mass amount of individuals. Okay. We can't just look at it as, Oh, well, I know some good black, I know some good white people or nice white people, or I know some, some black people who got good jobs as a whole. How many black people have good jobs as a whole? How many white people are good or we could consider good or for our cause. Hmm. Okay. That's how we have to look at things. We get too individualistic with certain things where we have to look at things at, 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 at in its grand scale. Okay. So black wall street is destroyed. It dissuades us from wanting to create things as such in the future. Also takes away from our counter to a white Wall Street or the Wall Street today, which many Europeans, majority of Europeans, Jews are benefiting from. They're, they're getting the financial benefit from that because that's set up for them. So now we have no counter to that economically. Furthermore, being strangled by this uh, uh, white supremacist economic financial system in which we live in today, which is basically designed for many of us to live check to check and then for a small amount of us to enjoy what we would and may all consider certain luxuries and finer things in life and to get millions <clears throat> and hundreds of millions and some billions and trillions of dollars while others are living at a deficit. Some of which are living at a deficit for an education that they were brainwashed into believing would give them the money that they needed to pay off the deficit that they're in right now. But we're not going to go, we're not going to go into that, you know? Okay. Once again, from, we could go back to Kemet up until now with our, the, the, the book, the books in Kemet, the papyri, the scholarship, the mystery schools, the mathematics, all of the information was stolen. When individuals started to raid Kemet, when groups of individuals with the, the Hyksos, uh, uh, some of the Arabs, uh, some of the, uh, the, the Greco Romans, when they started to run into Kim and a lot of these individuals were not just looking for gold and, and, and uh, agriculture uh, or not agriculture, but uh, architecture. They were looking for books. They were looking for papyri. They were looking for information. OK, so even even there, as soon as we integrate, as soon as we make contact with these individuals, they're stealing and benefiting from knowledge that we've created. Knowledge and information in which they never fully grasp. So now they try to re-explain it in the schools today and they confuse us. That's why a lot of our children are confused in math and confused in science, because a lot of these individuals are going off the same principles that these original Greco-Romans came and, and stole from Kemet and never fully understood or overstood the information. And that's why when they try to re-explain it to some of our youth, they get confused by it or they get dissuaded by it. OK, because they never fully grasped the information. And now you're trying to go regurgitate it to us. OK, and that uh, that, that doesn't make sense. So so they they benefit from that and not just through integration, benefiting from the knowledge and the books and the, and, and the information that came in and the libraries. You, you flip that and reverse that. They also benefited when they came in contact with natives or indigenous 
individuals in the Americas showing them how to grow agriculture, botany, and how to live off the environment and the climate in an environment that they were not used to, they were not familiar with. So even then, they, they, they began to get knowledge and insight on how to survive and maneuver in the Americas, a, a, a foreign land. To the European at that point in time. So even their contact with, with natives now or, or their first contact with natives, we know what they did to Native Americans. They they killed them off, <clears throat> used chemical and, and germ warfare against them and, and tried to get them to basically integrate and assimilate as well. Who And I'll make that point since it's right there fresh on my tongue and on my mind through cut, cutting your hair. Um, Cutting face, like we know today, if it, if you want to be uh, many black men that are in the media, if any, in the sports media, there's a little bit more leeway, but we still know the overall images have a have a low cut, l- limited facial hair. No, don't have a lot of hair or or, or, or braids or, or a beard because that that's not what's considered in America a clean look in American society or in the workforce. Okay, so. That that's just assimilation where they take off where they were taking away their clothes and their regalia and like I said their hair and th- and they made a lot of Native Americans or Native Indigenous individuals assimilate as well and that's what we have to start under grant under understanding and overstanding is integration is just a nice word for assimilation and assimilation is get take let go of your cultural customs let go of your language let go of of your clothing and your regalia let go of your your belief systems and, and, and your your portrayals and images of beauty let go of these things and adopt our mindset our clothing our ideologies okay so when you really break down integration it was really assimilation and assimilation is a more forceful term letting you know that it's not by choice a lot of us feel like we integrated because of the civil rights movement and Brown versus Board of Education. It was a choice. No, you integrated because you were made to integrate because whether it was individuals within the white supremacist society who started to understand how it would benefit them or or whatever those whatever led to everything taking place. It we, not, Amos Wilson breaks it down. If you ask for reparations, they're going to give you reparations in the form that they want to give you reparations. If you ask for a police, if you ask the government for a police force and things of this nature, they'll give it to you how they want to give it to you. So you ask for integration and you fight for integration and you feel like you swayed or you had some type of pull on the government, but you didn't. The government already made up in their mind they were going to do it, but they were going to do it in their way. And as we see today, it's a pretty... It, it, it's a non-enjoyable way of them doing it. They're not doing it in a way that's beneficial to the survival and, and the overall sustainability of blacks and Africans moving into the future. So when we look at <clears throat> sports, when we look at media, when we look at movies and entertainment, I, I, I talked about it a little bit earlier. And so I'll brush over it very quick as we go into the other points, but they're controlled by whites. We had we had Negro leagues. We had our own sports leagues. We had individuals who would have been able to step into being owners and and executives and general managers of sports teams. But as soon as we had individuals, and this is not to castrate this brother or single this brother out, but he was one of the big stories of this happening, a Jackie Robinson. Okay, soon as we have individuals say, well, there are great players in in the Negro League. Got the best talent in the Negro League. Ain't no more talent here, but the money, the exposure, and the access is limited. Therefore, I'll go into the major leagues. Okay. So once you go into the major leagues, as a player, you can benefit. But as a society or as a group of individuals, as a black collective, we don't benefit because we have no ownership. And what's the likelihood of a white majority owner or a white general manager of a team? to go in and sell their team or give their team to somebody black. What's the likelihood of a nice selection of black people to even choose from who have the money and the access in the pool and the relationships and in the networking to even get that type of job. Okay. So, so you see for one individual, it may be a benefit. So for many of these players, it's a benefit. For, for not just for us as viewers and fans, 
but for them, their families, so on and so forth. But as a collective, we don't truly benefit because the owners of these leagues, the owners of these major film film studios, the owners of these of these major entertainment and media outlets are all white or European or Jewish. Therefore, <clears throat> those communities receive the reciprocal benefits from that. Those communities receive those financial benefits from that. Those communities of people and their families and, and, and their societies and their communities and neighborhoods benefit from that in the long run, okay? <clears throat> It helps to improve their way of life, their standard of living financially. Now, as we said, the players will be able to do charitable things for their foundations, for their families, for their communities. And, and we're not taking away from the work that's able to be done. But as I said, if we were not integrating through sports, if we weren't, if we weren't willing to to integrate through sports, we will have our own piece of the pie. We will have our ability to negotiate where we will say, well, we got some of the best players, so we got to renegotiate some things to get more black ownership. We got some of the best athletes, so we need to renegotiate things to where not all these arenas and all these highways is running through the black community. Okay? So we when, when, when we when, when we integrate, and we want to be accepted into the society and along with all of the trinkets that are that are there available we take away from our own foundation and our own leverage of power where we can say like i said we can go to the negotiation table we can't at this point in time we can't negotiate no deals to get black ownership we can't negotiate no deals to get a black lead you can't you can't, you can't do that because they've already created a stronghold and like i said I'm not wronging anybody who has in the, in the past, you know, Jackie Robinson and, and pro players and, 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 and t pro players today. So on and so forth. I'm not I'm not going at them or wronging them or trying to castrate them for the decisions that they made, because many of them did it through a lack of knowledge. Many of us make these decisions due to lack of knowledge. Many of us make these decisions due to lack of access, due to lack of of ability to be around individuals who are gamed in these fields. So we know, oh, we about to get a contract, about to get some money, cool. Oh, for our college students who, that's just another form of basically free labor or slave labor, okay? You're talking about a degree, which is not guaranteed to equate to any money, yet you talk about these players who are playing that is guaranteed to equate to money, can't make money off their likelihood. Uh, I think in California, they're doing some things and they're changing some things, but nationwide, it's still not available for them to make money off their image and their likeliness. That, why is that? Through integration. You, you integrate and you lose control. You integrate and you lose leverage, okay? So we, we're so deep into the integration. Like I said, it's not, it's not realistic for us to even say we need to make our own leagues or, or we need to do something to get more black owners because- to a certain degree, we we can't unless, unless we was able to collectively put a hold on the players and then say, okay, we got a hold on all our black players. We need to do some things to shift black representation. And even then, you would have to hope whoever's in ownership is still going to use their funds and resources to help better the black community. Because through integration as well, many of us have a self hatred mindset. Many of us have adapted a. a, a a, a Eurocentric uh, mindset of greed and gluttony and selfishness when it comes to money and not wanting to give back. So you have to even question if we were able to even negotiate and find a way to get more black ownership and get more representation, not at, at, at the bottom of the hierarchy, but at the top of the hierarchy, would the funds, would the time, would the energy still be reallocated to the community? Because as we know, for a multitude of reasons, some some which you can agree with and disagree with. Many people, many blacks, when they do, or Africans, when they do get money, they move from the hood. And some of them don't always reinvest in their neighborhoods or reinvest in black communities. They begin to start to think, they begin to start to think, how much money can I make? How much more money can I make? Rather than what can I do to better the community? What can I do to set up long-term residual income for not just my family? but the black community as a collective as well. So those are things that you have to factor in today. So in integration is definitely taking us away 
from from that ability to mon fully monetize and profit on a macro level for our ability as athletes and our influence in sports, media, rap, entertainment. Many of all of these rappers and all of these entertainers are at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the CEO of the label, uh, the owner of the label, the, the individual who has the connections with distribution, the individuals who have the connection with the radios, they're, they're further down. Okay. And, and we needed to use our talent as leverage to get to those positions, but due to integration and due to basically being fooled into being accepted into a white society, many of us never thought to develop these things and to be in these positions because we figured, well, since everything is cool and we integrated now, we'll just go to white people to get it. Not understanding and overstanding, they're giving you the 360 deal. They they not giving you, they not looking into the into the concussions and the actual damage that your body is taking. They don't want to give lifetime full beneficial insurance to all of the football players and retirees. Uh, the NBA has racist bigot type owners, so so on and so forth. So so they 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 they're giving you the illusion, hey, we're all inclusive, everything good. We letting you in. So you you don't have to have a black league or have black owners or none of that because it's integration, remember? We will handle that. We'll handle that. You don't need black people understanding the intricate details of how to get the residual money. You don't need black people in the positions of higher power understanding how you set yourself up and your community up into the future for centuries with the money. Y'all can just get the money, stay on that lower level, potentially trick it off, potentially invest it, potentially take care of your family. That's all up to you. We know a nice amount of you are going to go broke. So we'll keep you at that level because once we start to let you get up, the probabilities of you going broke lower, the probabilities of you tricking your money off lower, the probabilities of you spending your money on, on needless uh, depreciating materials lowers once you start to get that access. So that's why they keep us at that level. They keep us, instead of getting us to a, to own, owning industries and owning land and owning, and, and owning a full team, they keep us to buying Benzes, buying Bugattis, you know, buy Balenciagas, ice. They keep us on that level. So we we fresh and shit. But when it comes to land, understanding the full business of it, understanding how to set it up years to come, understanding how to put your kid, multiple kids on and multiple just whites in general on for the future. They they understand the aspects of that. That's why it's just players. When you talk about anything else, it's it's dominated by whites in sports, whether it's coaching, refs. General managers, executives, trainers, it's all dominated by white. So any sport that we know is in predominantly basketball, football, and track, every all other representatives, a majority of all the other representatives are going to be white. Yet without the athlete, there is no product. Okay. So let's let's move forward. Uh and, I've alluded to this and I'll touch on it. Integration overall affected our minds, our cultural norms, what we deem is beautiful. What you what you see, uh, light skin, long hair is beautiful or, bi or, or biracial because now they have light skin and not as nappy hair is beautiful or straight hair, white blonde is beautiful or skinny white woman is beautiful or blonde or, or white brunette is beautiful. Our whole standard of beauty change our whole standard of, of of culture and we do have a subculture within american culture but a lot of our cultural customs and norms our language our foods our traditions our storytelling uh our our botany our connection to the earth getting grounded all of those things left us all of those things were snatched away from us or used for the benefit of a european power structure so many of these things were taken away from us okay uh, how, how we how we view life, how we how we view ourselves, how we look at ourselves is all changed through integration. How you say that, Chance? Why you say that, Chance? Do the media, do the subliminal messaging, do the subconscious, do the subconscious stimulation, do the showing you images of beauty day to day, whether you fully digest it or not. They're 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 programming them down your throat, whether it's most of commercials being white, whether it's most of models being of lighter skin or being white or being thin and so on and so forth, whether it's judging yourself and valuing yourself on how much money you can make, judging yourself and valuing yourself on how many women you can entertain, how many women you can have sex with, how many women you can impregnate, um, not being able to control your ego, 
These are things. These are things that we mastered. These are things that we mastered before contact with Europeans. Okay, so so that this is what I'm getting at. As I said, was Kemet perfect? No. Did Kemet have the ups and downs? Yes. Were certain people in Kemet uh, victims of their ego, so on and so forth? Yes. I'm not saying we're perfect. We were perfect human beings then, but I'm saying we definitely hadn't downgraded to the state that we are today in this Greco-Roman European society that we live in. Okay, let's let's move forward. Let's move forward. Uh, we, as I was talking about, we then, through integration and assimilation, ran away from what we deem to be beautiful. We then ran away from our cultural beliefs. Through integration and assimilation, we, we started to understand that you got to fall in line. You got to do what a white person wants you to do. You have to dress and speak how a white person likes you to dress and speak. You have to do things to fit into a white society. Okay. So assimilation pretty much started to dissuade us from our culture, from our customs, from our beliefs, because we, we, we were very aware going to a job interview with Kente Cloth and the Dashiki especially if it's a nine to five corporate white based job, wouldn't probably be the best tire to go into or telling people that uh, Jesus is not white or I don't believe in Jesus Christ or, or, or I don't believe in Jesus Christ in the image that you believe in Jesus Christ as in all of these different beliefs or, or going in and, and speaking in a native tongue or, or one of the many native languages that come from the continent of Africa. These types of things don't go well. OK, they don't they don't fit into the white societal structure. OK, so therefore you get dissuaded to do these things and you start to remove yourself from that because that's not your day to day reality. When on average you have to encounter a white person on average, you have to fall in line or do what it is a white person wants you to do. So therefore you fall out of place with these things and you don't become as connected to these things as you were once before, because, you know, the society doesn't ask for these things. The society doesn't promote these things. Therefore, you're not going to display them. Okay. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. <clears throat> and now, of course, we, we have confusion. We have confusion through integration. We, 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 we try to, we try to function and excel in an economic structure that is designed for us to fail. Okay. Now we feel like some of us feel like there is no such thing as racism. Some of us feel like racism is dead and everybody has an equal shot at opportunity in life. And as long as you try hard and work hard and strap yourself up by the bootstraps and go hard every day, success is just going to find you and you'll just make it in life. And that's, and, and, and that's just not the reality. OK, so many of us have become confused through integration. Many of us have become lost through integration. Many of us have, have become docile through integration and assimilation. Many of us have now been brainwashed to believe that we have equal opportunity as our white counterparts. Many of us have been brainwashed to believe that we, we have the same financial opportunities as our white counterparts. Many of us are meant to believe we have the same economic opportunities as our white counterparts. And this just isn't true. But through integration and assimilation, many have adopted this mindset that everything is equal now. Everything, slavery was 400 years ago. Everything's equal now. Racism is gone. We were way more inclusive and progressive. Everything is equal now. Many people today still believe this to be true. And that's, and we all know that many of us know, we all don't know, but many of us are aware that that's false. So through integration, it started to confuse us mentally and, and, and psychologically. As I alluded to, we have we have minimal black owned businesses, sports leagues, news channels, legal firms, hospitals. We 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 can't. And I think uh, Killer Mike on his Netflix series alluded to this point. We, we're at a state now where you can't really do everything all black, even if you wanted to, because we're under such a stronghold, we're under such a stranglehold, such a grip on the white supremacist power structure that you can't even do something all black no more. You 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 can't you can't go a month and only spend your money with black people. It's 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 almost practically impossible now, due to specifically or primarily what integration. There was a point in time where we knew 
We don't do business with white people. Don't know white person want to do business with me. We knew. I don't. I'm not about to go ask no white person to give me legal advice or give me some advice and this and that and that. Because because we knew they wouldn't do what's in our best interest. And many public defenders and some lawyers, even to, even to this day, whether they're being paid or not, still exhibit these behaviors. So there was a point in time where we understood and overstood that that there was no way integration would work for us. We were brainwashed. And, and even through individuals within our own community were brainwashed and used as tools and chess pieces to push us forward into a realm of integration, where now we're relying on it. Look. Look at this. How how am I doing this video? Uh, a, 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 a black owned business didn't control this laptop. A black a black owned business or company or streaming company doesn't control YouTube. So even even to this day, we're at a point where there's not much we can even do without being tied to a white power structure because we integrate it. So we don't have something where it's all our black stuff. All uh, the the streaming channel is by is by uh, some black people in tech or in or in the field of data and information. The the content is provided by us. The sponsors is all by us. It, we there are a lot of individuals working to do that through through uh, YouTube uh, through Patreon. But we're at a point now where it's almost impossible to exclusively have something that's literally all black. From the data analysis to the streaming to the actual individuals on the ground doing the work, we, we, we basically assimilated or integrated our way out of these opportunities to even really have self-dependency or really be self-dependent. We've, we've practically taken ourselves out of the ability to do that. You know, we, we, we've, like I said, assimilated or integrated ourselves into a reality where that may no longer exist for us to have something literally all black. Or to be able to say, you know, from from my business model to to the device I'm using to the 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 internet source through the media outlet or the website I'm using, that's all distributed or created or produced by somebody black. Now, do we have the potential? Of course, but with YouTube and its existence. Even if we were to create something, it would take decades to then rival YouTube. You, you get what I'm saying? So even if we were able to develop these things, there's still rivals and competition out here that you have to deal with as well. So through, integ through integration, we still find ourselves at that point where we're under control. OK, and we're not able to have something that's called our own. And it's not then it's no hatred, but it's no hatred against another group. But we should have these things. We should have multiple organizations that could give our kids jobs immediately out of high school, immediately out of college. We should have multiple institutions in, in media, in tech, in, in agriculture, and in engineering, because we're very talented and gifted people. We the first, we humans are the greatest form of technology. We're the first human form of technology. What are the greatest human forms of technology? We know many of our kids, when you tap into their intelligence and their consciousness, they're geniuses in a multitude of fields. So it's not that we aren't capable, it's that due, due to integration, it took away our capability to do it for ourselves, by ourselves. So now, even if you go to college and get that master's degree or get that or, or get that PhD in, 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 in tech or coding or, or, or engineering or, or architecture, many times you're going to then go work for a white corporation, a predominantly white corporation with predominantly white CEOs, COOs, Presidents, vice presidents, chairmen, GMs, board members. So, yes, you like like we alluded to earlier with the athlete comparison. Yes, you've gained some financial, uh, some financial leeway and some financial leverage and leniency and some financial gain yourself as an individual and your family and the individuals that you may be able to impact, but as a collective, we don't because you weren't able to go and work that entry position and move your way up and then become that black CEO or that black COO. And just off rip, you naturally would hire individuals, ideally, who look like you the same way these white individuals do. It's just natural. OK, so that's the issue. We, we can get our feet in the door and we can get certain positions, but we can't be the brick and mortar foundation of that. The start of that, where 
All of the representation is us. The individuals who represent the corporation are going to want to do what's best for us, employ us, so on and so forth. That's the issue. Is having that is having is having a police force that's trained by us through our community standards and regulations. They live in our community. They're from our community. They're involved in the community. Therefore, they build intricate relationships with individuals, whether they're doing criminal activity or not within the community, because they have to be involved in the community. That's not even a realistic expectation in our society today due to integration to say we want an all black police force. We want a police force that is brought on and elected by the community collectively based off their community service work, based off their work in the community, whether it was a requirement or uh, by choice. OK, we, that that's the issue. Yeah, we can have black police officers and a black police chief and black lawyers and black and black judges and, and, and black Supreme Court justices. But at the core of it is still white supremacy. At the core of it, it's still controlled by white supremacy. And that's the issue. OK, that's why we have the problem, because we can get the access, but we need complete constructive control. Look up the brother Khaled Muhammad. We need complete constructive control. So that means if the majority of us is not in all positions, not just entry level positions, but add man and above. We losing. Due to what? Integration. Because had we not integrated, we would have been for we as we already were making Black Wall Street and doing things for ourselves before integration. We had no choice but to build these things up for ourselves. So through evolution and through time, we would have developed all of these things, not just to compete with the white power structure, but to provide for our black nation, for our African nation that we had developed. Because we, we got we got every right to this land as an indigenous Native Americans. As, an, as an indigenous native people, many of which we know were black as well. These, these Europeans got a whole stranglehold on the land, don't even got no right to the land. Got a whole stranglehold on it, don't got no right to it. We we can't, it's certain people can't grow at their apartments, can't grow even at their houses, can't make changes to the land and stuff. Got all this land. If you from Omaha, you from Nebraska, you know you drive west, east, north from Nebraska. When you get out of here, it ain't nothing but land, just empty land. They got control over all that, don't even... Ain't even did nothing for it. Ain't even did nothing to deserve it. When they came here, didn't even know how to use it. Didn't even know how to fertilize it and, and take the land and get life from it. Come from a season where things are dead, the season we in right now where everything is dead and knowing how to renourish and get life from it. They didn't even understand that science. Had to get that from the natives. Had to kill, had to kill them off and persuade them and stab them in the back to get that science. Integration, assimilation, exactly. It's detrimental. Okay. Oh yeah, now we gotta go here. A lot of a lot of the assimilation, like I said, it, it messed with us heavy mentally. Where a lot of us, we hate ourselves. We hate how we look. We hate how we talk. We hate our self-image. Why? Because a lot of the programming, a lot of what you're gonna see in the media, a lot of what you're gonna see even in a even in a magazine, even at school, even in history, anywhere you go in society is gonna tell you that white is right and lighter is a little bit better. So you know me, huh? I'm a little bit better because I'm light skinned. But black is wrong. Black is negative. Even if we go break down the word itself in a dictionary, we could go in for days. Yet white is pure and white is clean and so on and so forth. So we've been brainwashed into a lot of self-hatred. I mean, we've been brainwashed into self-hatred from shows like uh, Mari and, uh, and, and shows like um, uh, Jerry Springer and, and these crazy gossip shows and, and, and these shows that show us in a negative light constantly show show our women um, behaving erratically, behaving crazy, behaving wild, behaving rude, behaving unladylike, showing our men doing the same things. Many of these reality TV shows today where celebrity men and women putting their whole relationships on front street and, and disrespecting each other on camera, disrespecting each other in the media, disrespecting each other for the whole world to see, acting ignorant for the whole world to see. That devalues and dumbs down our self-image. That devalues and dumbs down our self-love. The love that we have for ourselves inside. So go, continuing to go into this, continuing to speak into this, these are the things that have affected us through integration. Many of us may or may not be aware of the self-hatred that exists within the black community. Skin bleaching, skin bleaching cream sells the highest in the continent of Africa. 
So even to this day, we still have that self-hatred, be it our dark skin, be it our noses or our lips, all of these things in which we were told and programmed to hate about ourselves. All of these things in which many of us go and get surgical procedures and all these different procedures do, yet now we see, now it's the reverse. Now white people is, is tanning like crazy and getting lip injections and butt injections and, and all of these things that we were told were ugly for centuries, okay? So- a lot of a lot of the self hatred is due to integration because why would I why would I I, I had you as a slave, I had you as three fifths of a person. I'm about to allow you to be considered a person, but I still don't really look at you as a human. I really still don't. Why would I create a society or create media or create magazines or create imagery or create optics that show you in a bright light or that show you in a beautiful manner? Why why would I do that? That doesn't make sense. See, when you understand that the system is oppressive and you start to take away the individual nice white people, you know, you can start to understand and understand white supremacy. Because sometimes I say this and people get turned off because they got 20 good white friends or they got five good white friends. So it just they, it, they just can't fathom it because they're cool with white people. OK, but once you start to uncover this, you will see what's really going on. And, 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 and due to. The big brother or due to the oppressor, because I don't even want to say big brother, because even your big brother don't treat you like these individuals. So I'll say due to the oppressive advantage or leverage that they've had over us, they will never show our women and our men in, in their highest, at their greatest, at their best. They'll always show Egyptians and Africans as lighter skin, as my skin tone and under. OK, they'll always do these things. They'll always even even with their dealings with different races. They'll always treat a, a lighter skinned person like myself better than a darker skinned person, or they may trust me more than a darker skinned person. They may assume I'm biracial in comparison to a darker person. All, all of these things is still that skin tone. And then they create the self-hatred where we got team light skin, team dark skin. Light skinned niggas deserve crabs and shit. Dark skinned niggas deserve sandwiches and, and, and chips. You know, dumb shit like that, where we still got that image. And even growing up, I suffered from it where I could only find beauty or attraction in a lighter skinned woman, or I could see the most beauty and attraction in a lighter skinned woman. So it wasn't to say I didn't see darker skinned women and see beauty in them, but I could see a beautiful, a, a beautiful dark skinned woman and a just as equally beautiful light skinned woman. And my eyes are just naturally attracted to the light skinned woman, even though the darker skinned woman just as beautiful, just as fine. So it even took me time to deprogram myself. I, I used to uh not like being light skinned because I used to get called banana and adopting and certain stuff by uh my older sister and my younger brother growing up. Not not knowing, of course, it's it's lies, and you know, as kids we pick on ourselves, but I used to think somewhat being light skinned was bad. And then and then if you light skinned, we all know, like, oh y'all light skinned niggas, y'all niggas soft, y'all niggas think y'all cute, y'all niggas think y'all pretty, but all of this shit go if you're from Omaha. Go to the African bookstore on 30th and Lake and get the Willie Lynch. And the Willie Lynch would break all this down. How they was putting the young Negro against the old Negro, the light Negro against the dark Negro, so on and so forth. And that just furthermore goes into certain tactics, certain torture tactics that was used against us through integration and dealing with white supremacists. OK, so let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Yeah, the whole the whole idea of it, of integration is backwards as I was talking about, because whites have hated us and many of them still do. And as a collective, the white supremacist power structure hates us. So it makes no sense really to integrate with a group of people who hate you or have no love towards you or still have hatred towards you. Once we started to integrate many, many of these companies that we see today, many of these top 500 companies and all of these power companies and Fortune 500 companies, Many of these companies, many of these main industries, many as the entertainment industry especially, is all benefiting from our talent. Yes, like I said, we have individual rappers and actors and actresses and, and, and entertainers and sports and sports people and media personalities. We have these individuals who will garner millions and will gain millions, but as a collective, our community does not progress from it. Okay. So most of our talent and most of our abilities are still. The, the highest benefit or the individuals receiving the most benefit are white or Jew or the white supremacist power structure. OK, so even to this day, we still have 
a lot of talent, but it's being taken advantage of because, like I talked about earlier, we're not in those positions of ownership. We're not in those positions of the general manager or the president or the vice president or the CEO or the CEO in all of those positions. So, therefore, those people benefit the most from our talents or from our skills. I'll continue to make this point, and I've been making this point. Integration now has a chokehold on society. It has a chokehold on us. Assimilation has a chokehold on us to where many of us will never want to tap into the true African traditions and cultures, will never want to tap into black cultural norms, never want to start to reframe certain black cultural norms that are detrimental to the black community. Many of us now have just been totally dissuaded, totally confused, and it has a chokehold on us, not just physically in a figurative manner, but mentally as well, spiritually as well. Okay. Uh, integration has led to an excess in uh, biracial relations, specifically black white relations and interracial black white relations. And I thought, as I've alluded to earlier, if you like white, if you're a black man and you like white women, if you're a white woman, you like black men. But I, that does not bother me. I'm speaking collectively on how it affects us, especially as I have in this point, depending on how the child is raised. Is the child raised predominantly by their mother and only gets access to white cultural norm and white societal norm? Is the child only raised by the black side of the family and given access to black cultural norms and black societal norms? And as we all know, who have mixed friends, some of us know like, oh, you mix. But you black mix because you, you you talk black, your hair, your norms, your, your mannerisms. You can tell you spent a lot of your time or if not a majority of, of your time, if not equal amounts of your time with your black family because how you act. And then we know we'll have those other mixed people where we'll say, well, I can tell by how you talk and stuff. Yeah, you uh, J. Cole to Patrick Mahomes, you know. You mix, but your experience was highly white, okay? And then moving forward, these things create confusion because in America, in American history, if you have any amount of black and you realistically, you consider black. But yet at the same time, if we're getting technical, you still are biracial. The, the history between blacks and whites in America still is and has always been very choppy, very controversial, very traumatic for black people. So to then intermingle, all I'm saying is through integration, this just increased intermingling, confusion, some kids not being able to really latch on to either identity. Some kids may start to have hatred for one side of their family once they find out the history or another. Some of these, we, we still had the absent father aspect of it where some of these kids will then start to get hatred, not just for their father, but may start to create hatred for blacks or black culture, or black society due to their father being black. So. Am I saying I have something against biracial dating or people having children that are black and white or mixed with black and white blood? No, I'm just saying these are issues that come with this. These are things that are created through integration and assimilation that had we not gone this far down the road into integration and assimilation, we wouldn't be dealing with these issues. OK, the same way. Have we not integrated into this society as deeply as we have? We wouldn't have so many black male female issues we wouldn't have so many black male female controversy within our relationships we wouldn't have so many absent fathers and absent mothers through this integration through the, and this is a quick point that just came to my mind i'm gonna make it through integration we're talking about the crack era we're talking about school to prison pipelines we're talking about uh three strikes you out 1994 crime bill we're talking about COINTELPRO pro and all of these different groups and, 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 and militias and in and, and, and police sectors and, and, and CIA sectors that were created to kill off individuals uh, like the Black Panther Party, uh, kill off individuals like Malcolm X, individuals of the Nation of Islam, and, and, and many other powerful in, individuals, okay? Through integration, all of this was developed. Once we started to integrate with these people and they started to see our power and our influence, they had to start to create COINTELPRO in different in different secret groups. And then and then they started to create, then they started to create the coon or the nigga that's gonna turn against other black people. They started to create the double agent. They started to create the self-hatred once again on a further scale, the self-infiltration, because we know many of our leaders, whether it's Martin Luther King, rest in power. 
or 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 Khaled Muhammad, rest in power, and so many others, Malcolm, Malcolm X, and so many others. Many of these individuals were infiltrated. It was individuals on the inside working for European power structures, European power structures, specifically FBI, CIA, COINTELPRO, police. Okay, so through integration, all of that was developed as well. Okay, that, that was just a point I just had to make on top of the point that I was on with the biracial stuff. Okay, and, and it, we, once again. Integration, we're behind enemy lines. So no matter, so no, I, I, I stay in Omaha, Nebraska. If, if y'all from Omaha, y'all watch me, y'all support me, y'all know. Come on, man, we behind enemy lines. If, if white people, if white militias clicked up today, there's there will be nothing for us to do. We know, we know, when we dealing with the police. When we out here, there's nothing for us to do. We behind enemy lines. We all know that. We know that in America, not and not just Omaha and not just Nebraska. That's Nationwide, we be through integration. We behind enemy lines. We we real talk. We can't protect ourselves. We can't protect our women. If a if a cop want to profile me and, and rape my woman in front of me, or or, or, or disrespect my woman, or, or any black man, we can't we can't stop them. We we can we can try. Hopefully we arm so we can really have a shot. But we know you know what I'm saying. Through integration, we behind enemy lines. Real talk. We can't protect ourselves. We can't protect our babies. We can't get these police up off us. We couldn't get the military up off us or the National Guard up off of us. We can't. We behind enemy lines. We don't got nowhere to go hide and retreat and duck off to if it was to go down and it was really some race war shit. We we behind enemy lines. We don't have no technology or no military or no groups of individuals that's organized with guns or no or no black militia groups like that. We're totally behind enemy lines. Uh, yeah, integration tricked us, it, and, it, and, and it, it was it was a big trick bag, but it tricked us into believing that America would act in our best interest. It tricked us into believing that America actually represents us in our reality. Integration tricked us into believing that America will protect us and serve us, which is not true, and it never has been true, and it never will be true. But through assimilation, through integration, through being able to vote, through getting certain access, through basically being told, we're not going to treat you like chattel slavery and three-fifths of a human no more, but we're going to actually treat y'all like real, actual living beings. We, we fell for the trick bag and we got confused into thinking America would actually represent us or act in the best interest of us, which is, which is totally insane. You know, it, it, it makes no sense. Integration also took away from the traction in the movement of the reparations uh, of reparations and, and getting black nationhood and sovereignty due to the fact that once we integrated, we put our guard down. Oh, we integrated now. So we'll get we, we integrated. We so happy about that. We can vote Civil Rights Act. All of this. OK, we so happy about that. We're going we're going to chill on the reparations talk. We're going to chill on that. black. And there, I mean, of course, Khalid Muhammad, Nation Islam. There was still a lot of different people still talking about this. But as a collective, many of us probably swayed away from those groups, swayed away from those ideologies because we started to think, well, there's certain, we, why would we need our own nation when we're part of the American nation? Why do I need my own sovereignty when America's a sovereign nation? Why do I need my reparations when America's giving me job opportunities and college and all of this? So we got fooled once again into believing that through certain access, through certain voting rights, through certain civil rights that we were literally going to be represented equally in America or have proper representation in, in America. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and, and a lot of, and a lot of black people took the civil rights movement and integration as the end to racism. Cause now, Oh, you can eat at you. I'm not going to beat you and sick dogs or you can come to my business. Now I'm not going to kill you off and stuff. You can walk on the sidewalk, just look down and don't look at me. Okay. I'm not going to beat you and kick you out, but you just got to stay in that black section, which really, was the best thing for us. I'm not even going to lie. It was the best. It, like People will say I'm crazy, but the, the best thing for us today is to have our own, is to deal with ourselves, solve our problems, solve our issues, and do it collectively as a group. That's the best. That was, that was the best thing for us. Because at the end of the day, through, through survival and through understanding and overstanding our situations, we would have stuck together because we would have understood it's about survival. And it's about being in competition with the European counterpart. And we would have we would have acted accordingly. I know we would have acted accordingly. But many people thought integration, that's the end of racism. No, it's just covert right supremacy now. OK, let me continue because I got a 
few things to do here about to wrap this video up. Uh, it, it made us feel like we, integration made us feel like we no longer needed our exclusive black communities and exclusive black jobs because now we can go apply at a white person's business, work into retirement, potentially get a 401k and so on and so forth. We got hoodwinked into that thinking, well, oh, we, we don't need to have our own black jobs. We don't need to have our own black Wall Street no more and our own black businesses because we can go and work for other ones. Well, we're working for those other ones, but that's all we'll ever be as workers. We'll never be owners or partial owners and things of that nature because they're not designed for us to move up that far on the ladder. OK, integration didn't really end racism. It shadowed it into its convert form into a covert form now. Well, like a job can still hire you, and but yet still fire you off a of racial bias. At Omaha, Nebraska is an at will, uh, at will. Okay, so they can fire you here at will. Okay, and as you know, we get discriminated. Like as I said, our voice, accent, voice tone, uh, facial hair, actual hair. That's why I actually got my locks is because I wanted to be. A, a rebel against the system because I was seeing people get discriminated because they locks different natives getting discriminated because they long hair. So I had the nappy fro and I said, I'm going to get the locks. That's kind of like a rebel to the system and a rebel to the image that the society wants me to have, because we know you can get fired. You can get fired just for being black. And we know that still happens to this day. So many of us thought, well, because we could get these jobs, racism is starting to end because we can get these opportunities, racism is starting to end. No, racism is starting to adjust, evolve, and change. It will never end, okay? Uh, it uh, in Integration was never going to work because of the fact that white people can understand what we go through as blacks and therefore how can they truly work with us to help us overcome our situation and to help us get to where we need to go. So that's self-explanatory. White people haven't gone through what we go through. They haven't been through what we've been through. Therefore, they will never truly be able to empathize and sympathize with our experience and push forward to help us get to where we want to go. If a white cop pulls you over, for 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 a nonviolent drug crime, they're not going to think I'm going to throw this out and not write the ticket because I know this can affect you in the future with your jobs and so on and so forth. They're going to kick the right ticket. Go you're going about your way. And even a black cop probably, too, because of just the nature of the beast and the nature of the business. And that's just one example. But you feel what I'm saying in comparison to if it was we did have our own police system. We did have our own way to police ourselves. If we caught some young some young cats, had some drugs that they didn't have, we could approach it differently. You know what? You're going to do some punishment. We're going to talk. We're going to chop, chop it out as a community and there's going to be a consequence. But we're not about to do nothing to mess your record up or mess your opportunities up into the future because we've experienced that. Or we know people have gone through that or we've gone through that ourselves. So that's what I'm talking about. It's just certain things white people will never experience. Therefore, they'll, in, in situations of power, rarely will they ever be lenient on us. Rarely will they ever take their foots off our necks because they really honestly feel like we deserve it based off the facts that they think we're naturally criminal. We, we naturally exhibit criminal behavior. We, we're naturally violent people. We, we're, we're naturally built and designed to behave these ways. So therefore we get looked at in that manner, which in return gives you no leniency, no favor in your judgment. Okay. So that's something that we deal with as well through, through integration, you, you you integrated with people who will never understand what you're going through, so they'll never truly work in your favor because they never they 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 never understand it. They 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 still won't go through it. Their, their children won't. None of that. The closest they may get to it is maybe maybe somebody black they know who break down some game, but then they'll still never they'll never understand it unless they was right there to experience something. Like if they was right there and seen your house get raided and busted into with no warrant and you ain't have no drugs, and they said it was just you had a lot of traffic in the house, then they start to see shit. When they be with you and they see you get profiled and questioned and illegally searched when the car didn't have no weed and it didn't smell like marijuana, then they start. And even then, they just see, but they don't understand it because they don't go through it. So they'll never truly be able to feel it in their hearts. They'll never truly be able to feel what it's like to know that that shit is happening just because I'm black. They'll never be able to feel that. So, so they'll never truly be able to help us as a collective. Remember, family, never overlook that point that I've been making as a collective group of white people because we know it's white people who, who've seen the experience, who with the experience, and who arrived. But collectively as a race, they not. And just like we know, collectively as a race, it's black folks that's not going to ride. It's Coons and COINTELPRO and double agents all over the place. So we, we know that as well. We're we coming up on the end. 
Brown versus Board of Education. The young woman is walking into the school. Think about how insane and how backwards you have to be to send just how how assimilated, how much of a chokehold they have on you, on your mind to send your daughter to a school where people they got to send the National Guard with her. People just yelling, screaming, cussing, spitting at her. And then to go even deeper, you think a white person going to truly educate your kid the right way when they was killing your ancestors for reading? And we still be sending our kids to public schools to this day? This pedophiles, rapists, teachers is trying to uh, now restrain kids, teachers is lying to the kids, kicking the kids out, ain't, aren't adjusting their curriculums and their teaching styles to the kids. We do it to this day. Brown versus Board of Education was the worst thing to happen to us from an academic or an educational manner or aspect. Ain't no, ain't no white people about to educate us to survive. Ain't no white people about to educate our kids to be revolutionary and to be able to set themselves up to survive and a family to survive into the future at no public school or no charter school. They're not going to do that there. The whole school system is created to make your child a worker and docile, whether it's through workforce, whether it's through going or, or workforce in a trade, whether it's through getting a job right out of high school, whether it's through going to college and getting a job. And a majority of all those jobs and all those sectors I mentioned is going to be predominantly controlled by a white power structure or white corporate power structure or white corporate hierarchical structure from the CEO down, from the owner and vice president down. So even then, you're still going to just. So let's break it down. Public schools is educating your school to go get a job for white people. OK, that's what it's doing. It's not teaching you how to survive. It's not teaching you botany, self-defense, credit. Uh, it's, it's, it's not it's not teaching you uh, true economics. It's not teaching you money management. It's not teaching you cooking skills, proper, organic, vegan, vegetarian based cooking skills. It's not, this, this shit's not doing nothing. It's, it, it's babysitting at this point in time. And not even that, because half our kids is tuned out, cell phones, iPads, hallways, smoking, high, doing extra shit. So half the time our kids is in there, they ain't even getting nothing from them. No, no black male, rep, barely any black male representation in the teachers, barely any black female representation in the faculty for teachers. Not to mention that. So so once again, you get so you get so integrated and so assimilated, you go and send your kids to the enemy to get education. <sighs> OK, like I alluded to at the beginning of the video. We, we were doing for ourselves for centuries before we ever made contact with white people, okay? we Before we ever were tricked into believing we needed to integrate, we had so much, so much, so much greatness. Things that the world had never seen, things that the world never will see again unless you go to Kemet or unless you go to Africa in general because it's more than just Kemet and Nubia and Sudan and Waset and Luxor. It's more than just, it's a lot. We ain't going to Shanghai, Ghana, it's a lot. We ain't going in all of that, okay? Integration, through integration, we have uh, Clarence Thomas, the Supreme Court just coon. Through, through integration, we've had many black representatives throughout many uh, governmental positions. Haven't done much for us. We have Barack Obama. Didn't do nothing for black people at all. And, and you, if you, you can get in the comments or you can message me or whatever, Barack Obama didn't do nothing for black people at all whatsoever, nothing. Through integration, they'll give you, like I said, they'll give, they'll give it to you how they want you to have it. So even now, they'll give you reparations, but they're going to give it to you in they form. They're not going to give you no reparations with therapy, land, uh, business deals, different different economic deals, different contracting deals for, for different industries. They're going to give you integration how they want it. They're not, they not, if you was to get integration, they literally just give you a large lump sum. They wouldn't give you no business connections, no judge connections, uh, no political connections, no land allocation connect. They wouldn't, they wouldn't do none of that. They'll just give you a large lump sum of money because they know you niggas going to spend it. So they, like I said, they give it to you and they form, they'll give, they'll give you a school system They'll give you teachers and shit, and their teachers. They'll give you education their way, the Greco-Roman way. That's why you be reading uh, uh, Shakespeare and, and, and Homer and Ptolemy. You be reading all this Greek philosophy and all this stuff in high school. And they got you reading all this, all this white literature, all this Greco-Roman literature, because that's important to them and their history. Not ours, theirs. 
like I said, and, and, and we we coming really to the conclusion. We at, we at the point now where we, we don't own anything and we can barely do anything to fight against the political power structure. Many of us, many black businesses are self-owned. So that means you your marketing person, you the actual whatever you do, the designer, the engineer, you 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 the accountant, you the you the money manager, you you your promotional team, you everything. So it's it's very few black people at this point in time who can even say like they outright own something or they outright own a business or they have a business that they know can sustain three to five to 10 years into the future and they outright own it. So we're at a point now where it's a stranglehold on us through the white supremacist power structure to where, like I said, we behind enemy lines. We can, we can barely do anything for ourselves at all because it's that much of a grip on the necks of us. Okay. Now, now we now uh, uh, many of us. Oh yeah, this, this would be the close. These would be the last two closing points. Many of us now we we mimic and abide by uh, white societal expectations via our tone and our voice. A lot of us have to code switch, as we know, when you're going into work or you're going into the white society, you're trying to network and do certain things, trying to rub elbows of certain people. We know we got to code switch. You know, you got to talk right, look right, dress right, act right. But now we basically now we basically become what I want to make the premise of my book that I need to write about the artificial Negro. We basically become an artificial version of ourselves, adapting many of the ideologies and adapting many of the characteristics and mannerisms of the white supremacists or of, of, of the white power structure or of the image that the white power structure has given us. OK, so like I said, a lot, a lot, a lot of us, we want to we want to dress a certain way. We want to be sexually fluid now. We we have we have a sports worship issue. We have we have money addiction issues. We have a greed issue, uh, ego issues. We have all of these issues that we've adopted from assimilation and integration into the society. That's why even the Bible will tell you, uh, be in the world but not of the world. Okay, so we we got so integrated into this system, so integrated into the society that we become what the society wants us to be which is not our true selves, okay? And now we moving backwards. Now we lost. Now we confused. We not moving forward collectively as a unit because, oh, I don't agree with this or this brother. Oh, I don't agree with that with that brother. I know people ain't going to agree with a lot of what I say, but I know for sure if we was working collectively as a unit, I would work with people who may not agree with everything that I want to work with just on the premise that they black and we need to move forward together collectively as a black unit. So, that's pretty much the info to, to, to summarize it up. We know we had we had we had what we needed before. And through integration, it's only been negative effects up until this moment. And now we almost had a place of no return. So no telling if we'll ever really fully be able to get the European power structure, the white supremacist power structure off our backs and be able to push forward into the future collectively as a whole unit. So that, that, that's where we at right now. So as, I, as I've alluded with many of my points, integration, in my opinion, is one of the worst things to ever happen to black people in America or Africans in America. Because since integration, we since any contact with white people, the effect of that has been detrimental for black people. And that's what I mean. So the final disclaimer. No, I don't hate all white people. I know it's white people that will support uh, young black and intelligent. I know it's white people that will support YBI Academy. I know it's white people that consider themselves close to me or may consider me friends and so on and so forth. I'm not attacking you individually. I'm not saying I don't want to be around you or that I'm mad that I met you or that I hate you. I'm saying collectively integration has been a negative effect on black people as a collective. And it has only negatively affected black people whenever we've come into contact with white people as a collective. It has been a negative effect. Of course, we can have friendships and different partnerships now, but collectively, our contact with white people has negatively affected us. And it still does to this day. All right now. So as, as you know, I'll be coming with more videos. I appreciate anybody who actually will sit down and watch the whole video. You know, we coming from real humble beginnings. Um, I'm starting a lot of things up from the ground up, from the mud, I'm trying to revamp some things and really get on my grizzly uh, moving forward into the new year, moving forward into uh, a new a new stage and a new cycle of my life. So uh, please follow me on Facebook at uh, YBI YBI. 
Uh, you can also uh, support, share, and subscribe this video. And uh, I'll see you again soon, family. Peace and love.